Welcome back to another episode of FitPod. And as you know, I always bring you the best people in health, fitness and nutrition. Today, we have a very special duo uh, who have transformed many lives of many people around the country and around the world. Please welcome the Swinch Boys. How's it going, boys? Oh, you can have a little uh, round of applause. Put that, uh, yeah, that, in. Put that thing in the, the, oh, yeah. the, the cheering thing. Oh, oh, good. All good, bro. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much for coming. So, as you know, this podcast is all about inspiring people with your stories, the experience, and your journey. So, where have you, Scott, come from? What's your journey? But then we'll come to Troy. Um, in the what fitness space as a whole, or just where were you? Were you a skinny yeah. kid? Were you a fat kid? Yeah. You know. So bit- if we obviously in the sense of my introduction to fitness, I was. Um, essentially started getting a bit chubbier throughout my teens and hit that sort of 18, 19 year old and um, went on my first lad's holiday. It was quite overweight. I, I, I look back now and realistically I wasn't massive, but I was uh, I was fat and, um, but I wasn't really aware of it because I was always sort of a, a popular kid, didn't have any sort of yeah. issues that you would tend to associate with it. So anyway, long story short, um, went on my first lad's holiday, realized how self-conscious I was and you know, not confident with my body and whatnot. And then came back and um, got my first gym membership and started training from there. And over the years that just progressed into me getting into different sports. So I got into MMA, then into bodybuilding, then into actually training people. And then from there, it's all just flowed naturally in this fitness space. And we've been able to build you know, several businesses off of it. Um, and how did you meet Troy? Uh, through, <coughs> through the gym, through a mutual friend, through training. Um, this was like a lot further down the line. Um, Did you ever have like a passion to look better when you were younger? Nah, that, that's the thing is like, I'm saying it, it's hard for me to like think about then because I don't remember that version of myself, if that makes sense. Like I wasn't crazy no, you, obese or You anything don't remember like. or you don't want to remember? Nah, I mean, not even I don't want to remember because like I said, I was never, you know, the things you'd associate with, you know, I was a fat kid, I got bullied, it wasn't that. Um, I was sporty in school. Like I always did well at sports day. I played, uh, um, I didn't play football till I got older a bit, uh, but I was never. Do you remember like getting changed in the change rooms and anything like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm being serious, yeah, that was yeah. a big thing. Some of the kids didn't feel comfortable. Like, that, yeah, was a, that was a thing. But it wasn't until, until like secondary school um, and sort of later towards secondary school. So yeah. it's a strange one. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I suppose when you're in that, Sorry. the younger one, it's not, it's not as, uh... yeah. and I was always on? young and fit. Why is my, my I was um, silent? <laughs> I was always Sorry, uh, that was mom calling. That's all right. Mom, still that's, that's allowed. That's allowed. Yeah, no, I was always into sports and that. I mean, like I said, I did sports at school, played football. I was did the you know always did well in sports then. It was more like after school and like early sort of you no know, late teens where I started to put weight on. It was a bit chubby and and um, that's when it really got self conscious. So. I'm in that like in between space. I was always active, but I wasn't really kind. Con- I wasn't trying. I didn't care about look, being fit and being in shape and, until you went on the uh, yeah. And then that was what triggered the self conscious conscious aspect of it. And at that point, it was just I wanted to look good. I wanted to get girls and be confident. See, I like and, that honestly because a lot of people just want to say no, no, no. It wasn't for the looks. It wasn't for this. It wasn't for that. You know, I wanted to just kind of do something for myself. But ninety five percent of the lads are in the gym just to look good so could, so they can get yeah, 100%. what they want. And there's nothing wrong with that as well. I think, you know, like you said, a lot of people have to have the story of uh, there was there was a trigger as to why I train and that's my reason why. But at the end of the day, we all want to look good. It doesn't matter what, what your yeah, what your idea of what good is. We all would like to look better in some aspect. And See, when I started, um, it was just to, uh, to lose a bit of weight. Yeah. But then that kind of developed in flipping out. I, I can look yeah, yeah. It gets addictive. sick. It's a it's yes. a snowball effect. Yeah. yeah, you don't. We say it to our clients all the time. You are uh, never satisfied. Yeah, you don't. You don't realize it's a bit of a catch twenty two because you get yourself into that space and then now you like the shape you're in now. If you were to say when you first got to the gym, you would look like the way you did now. You'd be like, yeah, hundred percent. I'd be yeah. happy with that. But now you're thinking, right? No, this is not good yeah, enough. Yeah, it's not good enough at all. So that's <laughs> it's like the good and bad side of it. But um, yeah, essentially, when you think about it, it's like a, everyone will do a. A diet phase, quite harsh. It could be 6, 12, 15, 16 weeks, say, for example, and you'll get to that goal. Because you've done it in that period of time, it's quite hard to hold it. Whereas if they would have stretched that over maybe like six months, 
they'll be able to maintain it but no one's willing to spend six Stretch, months doing it yeah, they want it in say, six yeah. weeks everybody wants it yeah. like that yesterday <clears throat> but what are the short term and long term problems with getting it like that short term obviously your body can't adapt to it too quickly it's a lot of stress on your body um, long term I think doing it quickly you probably get addicted to that quick fix so you fall into bad habits of I fall off track you go on holiday you end up falling out of your routine you go back to square one if not even further and you know in your head right I can do this in six weeks I'm gonna do it again yeah, so you yeah. never actually end up maintaining a good relationship yeah. with your body image your nutrition and whatnot it's just you can look really good when you want to and outside of that it's that constant battle yeah. of not looking terrible and feeling horrible but not being able to get to that point as well so that's so what happened to me First time when I did the transformation, yeah, yeah, thinking, yeah, wrong. wicked, that's it, it's done. Yeah. When I had a comeback, <laughs> yeah. I was like, shit, it was. Yeah. It's, I like I said, did. it's with everything. It's uh, it's not that, you know, I think you mentioned it the other day when we were talking about whether you're looking at business or anything else, getting up to that point, getting to the point of success or whatever you see that as is, is not the hard, but it's maintaining it. Yeah. And that goes the same for your physique as well. You can, don't get me wrong, it's still hard work, but you can get to that pinnacle of your physique. But maintaining it is a, is a whole different ball game, and that that's where the effort comes in. That's why the longer term approach and doing something that's sustainable with elements of the you know going above and beyond that's a better model for longevity. Mm -hmm. Essentially, that's the that that, that's the the goal. It is maintaining whatever you do in life, whether it's yeah. relationship, marriage. You know, it's not getting there. It's maintaining that. Same with business, like building a business. It's ex exciting. It's fun. Maintaining a successful business. It's hard. It's yeah. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. of it is, 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 is maintained. That's like what everyone doesn't spend enough time doing. So how did you get into fitness? What's your story? So mine's obviously a little bit different to Scott. I feel like I've been always had a fitness background. I've always been into sports. I've always played football from a very young age. And I got into fitness through football, really. I had a passion for that. Probably wanted to be a footballer when I was younger, probably like most kids out there. Um, but kind of found my passion for the gym because we were able to use the gym at certain times. Um, I've trained from a young age anyway, because I think I've mentioned before, like we had a gym at school, yeah. which was our kind of school school year was the the first kind of year that gyms were introduced into schools. So we would just spend our lunch break lifting the heaviest weight in the gym, whatever we could do for one rep, just messing about. But I got an idea about physique development or, you know, building muscle and stuff like that. And enjoyed how did it. that differ from the kids with your mates at that time? It's like, no, let's go do this. And now I, I can't, I want to go to the gym. I want to do this. I was, I was very like, I never had one group of friends. I was like the kid who just, you know, I was the, everyone. Yeah. I was like the, I was a bit unique in that sense like you know Still i have up. my friend who what would, he means by that is he can roll with the white guys all the black yeah yeah Asian i literally guys. was because like my my best friend <laughs> from young yeah. yeah. no yeah. it was my yeah. best friend from school duran he was black kid who i literally went around every single day of my life and i'm the little white kid from certain coalfield ammo was one of my best friends indian family i was like i understood his side of culture and stuff like that because his mom and dad were very like you know um traditional, traditional yeah so I had a bit of everything when I was younger and I think that worked really well for me because I didn't see anyone for anything else other than just my mate, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that was good. But yeah, um, with the gym, I just went into it myself and whoever was in the gym, I'd be in the gym with. It didn't really matter. And then we kind of, I built friends from that really. Yeah, it's my, I think we both, we both, now we're thinking of it, we both sort of entered the, those spaces by ourselves yeah. and just built from there because other than shy uh, down the line, but that's like when we was like 19 onwards, None of my friends went to the gym. Now I'm thinking of it. Yeah. None of them went to the gym. Physique development or bodybuilding or anything like that. And wasn't how old were you back then? This is like teenagers. 17? Yeah. yeah. 17. I started training when I was like 19. Really? Yeah. But up until that point, none of my friends would went gym or anything. That's mad, you know, because I started in after 30. Yeah. Hated it. Hated the gym before. Just thought it was a waste of time. But who, who were your idols as kids? As a kid? You always look up to Arnie. And, and, was, oh, was he your aunt, was, was he your idol as a 16, yeah. 17 year old boy? Yeah, You've yeah. seen him every day and you're like, this is what 100%, I watch. Yeah. Like, you watch I all of that. You know. think 
awesome physique. I but I used to watch too. wrestling and just that'd be like, wow, I these look, guys look cool. As well. Ultimate Warrior and all yeah, of them. Ultimate Warrior is a beast. Um, I used to come out running as like, yeah, wicked, you <laughs> know, sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go running into bed and it's the same. <laughs> anyway, but you watched all of that and uh, then you go back to school and you forget about yeah. forget about it. Um, but I at that time it was just like the only you know the well, awesome shape. Yeah. But it was just like yeah, all right, cool, we kid. Yeah, that, no more than that. Mine just come out of nowhere because I don't remember ever having that. Like I watched all the Rambo and Arnie stuff and like watched wrestling, yeah. but I don't ever remember thinking, oh, you want to be? I want to look that. like that. Like I, like I don't. Yeah, I've never same. had that. I've I've watched it all. Like watched all the action films with yeah. Jackie Chan and stuff. Yeah. Because that's Wanted. most people's story. I grew up on Arnie, grew up on so and so, yeah. and that. But it was I just didn't have any of that. Whatever. Like, yeah. yeah all right. Cool. It's yeah. it's in, it's an, uh, entertainment. Yeah, it's yeah. You enjoy. You, they look great. But you want to be martial arts? No. Yeah. You want to be in bodybuilding? I think I was no. just a late bloomer in terms of fitness because I do feel like now with how well I've done in different areas, I feel like I wish I did just get no into idea, stuff yeah. on the start because. I feel like I've got that genetic athletic potential where I could have probably done anything and got to a good level if yeah. I just okay. But even yeah. basketball, yeah, <laughs> maybe not basketball. No, I'm good at, I'm good at I'm decent at basketball. Yeah, you are, I just but, dunk. but I can do everything. But I, I was never put into even football. I didn't start playing Sunday league football till I was like 15, 16. Just when my friends started playing, so like everything was late. Do you know what I mean? So I yeah. must be. Dinosaur, then if, well, if, if yeah, you think yeah. 15's late, yeah, 16's yeah. late, there's no right or wrong I time, is there? 30, bro. Yeah, well, that's it. There is no right or wrong time to, to start anything, I think, well, personally. If you but want a career out of it, the younger yeah, you start, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, the more you can get 11, out of it. 11, 12, you yeah, say, because yeah. I've got a little one now, and I'm thinking, what shall I kind of throw him into? Yeah, yeah. fitness, health, fitness, all of that is, is part of whatever yeah, yeah. you want to do. But um, motor racing, F1 driver. Yeah. Well, I'll say F1 driver, but let's hope it becomes... I saw a thing the other day and it was like, um, gymnastics is the best yeah. thing to start from because you can do it from like the age of three and it's mm -hmm. less impact and well, he told safer. Me that as well. yeah, and then yeah. that's like, um, it gives you the best sort of platform in terms of strength, flexibility, yeah, body weight. Cool. And then when they get to sort of six, seven, put them in every and anything you can sports wise, see what they gravitate to. And then when they gravitate to X, Y, and Z, put it all into that. I hope it just doesn't gravitate towards... Uh, Gymnastics, oh. like, come on, lad, come on, no, no, no. Right, ain't doing splits half <laughs> half a mile up in the air, no, no, Billy no, Elliot, no. and that's ballet, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. He's a legend. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 sir, no. I think the key is just getting into something, isn't it? I think yeah. having direction with something in the fitness space yeah. is always going to give you a good uh, foundation to build from. I think as a kid, it's important to have a sport which you got to be individual and you got to have as a team. I always say I'm going to make Isaiah do that, something like that. So he learns how to work within a team and something that he's got to be on his own. He's got to understand, you know, responsibility and sacrifice and all Definitely. that for himself. Definitely. Now, that's a good uh, analogy, to be, to be fair. Do something that you can do alone and as a team. Awesome. See, with the fitness bodybuilding, you like... Okay, my next question. <clears throat> when and how did Swench form? So and what is the word swench? So um yeah, swench doesn't actually mean anything in that sense. So um when we first sort of started, swench was just something we used in the gym instead of the word hench. Um like most people think it means like swollen hench or um like some sort of abbreviation. But in, me and Shy um used to anyone who's followed me for a while will remember Shy, he's still about. Um, but we started Team Swench Fitness and essentially Swench was just something we used to say in the gym. This was pure gym, Broad Street, back in the day in the middle of town when we first started. Um, and then that's where we was proper into the gym and we was built a good sort of physique and, and we started a Twitter. Um, and we just wanted to be sort of fitness profiles in that space. So mm. we started a Twitter, we called it Team Swench Fitness, started at Instagram and then just started documenting our own journey. Fast forward a couple of years, we've ended up training at Troy's gym through our mutual friend, Jack. We've all become friends. Um, and that's when the sort of boom of the fitness influencing type of thing was what was starting to happen. Um, Troy and Theo had their own fitness brand, me and Shai were Team Swench Fitness. And we were just doing everything together. We'd, we'd become really good friends. We was all training together. Um, and we just thought, let's put all of our energy into one fitness brand and just go with it. Um, 
we, we was all sort of grouped together as Swench, so people would call <clears> us <throat> either Swench Boys or them lot or whatever. So um, it just made sense to, for us all to adopt that name. And then we put that together, started making content, making videos. Um, we did our first Body like, Power. Body power yeah. And that was sort of the, the catalyst to, to the brand as a whole, really. So it was very natural for your mutual friends. Um, and then over the years, it's sort of, everyone who started there is still around, but it's just yeah. sort of been narrowed down to myself and Troy. It's something that you didn't force. No, not, not at all. It just kind of grew and it's happened, right people. Yeah, Come all very in. natural, yeah. All very natural. And um, like I said, it's only with, the, as it's got more to the business side of things, um, it, that's where it's become more myself, Troy and Theo. That's more and na- again, <laughs> uh, It's more narrowed down to us three, just down to what we, what we all wanted to do and you know other, other com- commitments and whatnot. So from a business aspect, it came down to me and Troy and Theo and then, but socially there's, lo- there's, a, there's a load of us, isn't it? Yeah. It was just very organic, very natural, just bouncing off each other and just trying to- So how things. many, my next question is, how many lives have you transformed? And what has the best one been so far? I wouldn't say our best one. We've got like, we've helped, we've helped thousands. There must be one that you think, wow, from somebody who's come from somewhere and absolutely smashed it out. Yeah. On the transform, you think, you know what? I mean, we've had loads. One of the it, best. It's like, it's, um, there's different it's totally success to the, stories. Yeah, to the there. individual, so like, yeah. We've got clients that visually you can see. So like Faye, for example, Faye came to us like uh, completely starting from scratch. Our own Faye. Yeah, Faye. Yeah, yeah. And if you look at her now, she's a coach. She's a competitive bodybuilder, like the complete opposite of where she started. Completely different person, physically, mentally, so on and so forth. And we've been a part of that for, you know, pretty much all of the way. So there's there's stuff like that. But then there's clients that we have, um, you know, that are just... But for us, we're so invested in the clients. It's sometimes the small wins, you know. So our clients will, um, you know, maybe suffering from anxiety or depression, and mm-hmm. and we get that feedback on how much we're helping them just get through the days and and feel more confident, or you know, their relationships better because they're feeling better within themselves. So th- it's hard to pinpoint yeah, one thing because we not, have such a, a a wide range of of stories. There's right? not just it's like life changing could be different for every individual. Mm-hmm. As True. Scott was saying, it could be the the person who's never trained in their life, no confidence. And now, you know, they're feeling comfortable and sexy in their own skin. It could be the person who's, you know, at this level already, you know, pursuing what they want to do. And then their fitness has helped them get a new job role, which has taken their lifestyle to a completely different level. You know, everyone's life can change through health and fitness. We were saying this yesterday, weren't we? We've had people who've had like fertility issues and, and or had to lose weight for IVF treatment and have done that and then had children. We've had people that... Um, have met through the so you help yeah, yeah, babies yeah. as well. Yeah, we've had we've had people that <laughs> we've met. Like I can specific think of it. Took up on our um, Shane and yeah. Tammy. Uh, shout out to Shane and Tammy. They both were individuals. Both did our transformation challenge. Met each other through the challenge, and they're literally expecting the first child like anytime really? soon now. So we've had loads of different stories like that. So yeah, for that's us, a, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. So for us, it's like our ethos is real Swinch people, babies. real results here, and uh, <laughs> we we obviously we get these stories week in, week out of from the smaller details to big things like that. So, so how does that make you feel? Because obviously you're trans- transforming someone's life. You know, when when someone like, for example, your your brothers or your, or your son or your daughter, someone passes their driver's test or gets good grades, it's, it's an amazing feeling, isn't it? Oh, you've done really well. But to transform someone's life from like this anxiety or mental health issues to something that they've they've become so confident and they can go out or they can wear that dress or the, mm-hmm. the, the jeans. How does that make? Because that's something totally different to getting a good grades or yeah. dri- driving, passing your driving tests and stuff like that. That's transforming someone' mental health. How does that make you feel that you know we were part of that journey? I think in the in the in the same sense we're all human, so we still understand how we all feel in certain situations. So imagine we play a part in being able to help these people feel like that. You know, we've all been in a place where we don't have confidence and, you know, we don't feel good. Obviously everyone's situations and circumstances are different, but for someone to come to you and to be able to open up about something deep in their life, and then you be able to implement things, actually, you know, put your time and effort into this person and spend time with them and change their life. It's like, it's, it's much more than just that feeling. I mean, every time you see them, 
and you see that smile on your face. Like we go through check-ins and we see smiles on the next week's check-ins and we see how they gradually change. It's a process and a journey that we kind of fall in love with as well, as much as they do, because the end goal is just, it's so rewarding. It's hard to describe really. It's just wholesome, isn't it? It's yeah. like really wholesome. And then in terms of job satisfaction, regardless of how well business is doing or maybe it's not and whatnot, it's like a level of job satisfaction that you can't get from like, it, it's just, it's more than a job in that sense. You know what I mean? So oh. it's um it's very fulfill fulfilling. I'll say that's the, mm. yeah, We've so. got a lot of clients who, you know, we might not be able to afford something one month. And me and Scott will sit down and go, you know what? This person's genuine needs, like, you know, that, that was we can one support of my it. Questions, like, you know, if someone's really needs help, but they can't afford it. Yeah. Because not everyone can afford £200 a month. Yeah. Or, we've done it with um, we've had, quite we've, a lot. Yeah, we've, we, we, we view that in mind. Like I said, our ethos is real people, real results. And our business model over the years has naturally ended up being, you know, you everyday people. So we understand the limitations and that, you know, cost of living at the moment is a big thing. So we, we have a lot of things in place with the business. We have payment plans and whatnot so people can spread stuff out. But then like Troy said, we've, you know, had clients in the past that, you know, are making really good progress. We've identified certain um, issues and whatnot they may have going on and understand how important this is for them. So we might say, you know, save that payment till next month or give them a couple of weeks free or we, we've done it a few times here and there. And uh, like I said, it goes back to just what we get out of it is because we understand the value that, you know, what this person gets out of it on a, on a deeper level. So, and I feel like that drives the business side because, yeah, um, you know, when we, we know we put invest our time and our effort into the client and we genuinely care and we genuinely put that effort in the, the financial side, the money side thing is going to take care of itself because you can't, you can't put a price on that. Yep. It's worth every single penny and we, we, we make sure our clients know that and the business runs itself in that sense because we're, we're not focused on the numbers. 100%. Now, how important is strength training if you are suffering from mental health? Have you had you must have clients. Yeah, 100%. I'd say ourselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone. Say, all of us. I think it's, <laughs> any, if you ask anyone that trains consistently, I think most people say it's at part of, or at least feels like therapy. So if someone is down and under and just doesn't know what to do, what advice would you get, give them? That, you know what, instead of going to a therapist yeah. and you're getting antidepressants and, and all of that stuff, which just kind of patches you up for yeah. a while. yeah. What would you say to them? Like, what are the benefits of strength training? Or even not necessarily strength training, but fitness in general. Yeah. You know, if you Just as a whole. As a whole running the, or the, the, whatever. The facts are there. The science is there that correlate, that directly correlates training, exercise with improvements in mental health. Like, you literally secrete hormones, uh, excrete, sorry, hormones and um, endorphins in the body that, you know, help battle with things like depression, anxiety and whatnot. So those have already been li linked to that's a scientific fact. But I think like I said, like, like Trish said earlier with sports and whatnot, what comes from putting effort into that side of things is structure, routine, building up good habits, um, you know, and when they all start improving, it helps with the mental health yeah. side of things as well. Do, they ha do you have people, um, your clients, um, not confident going to the gym? 100%. With our programs, how do they overcome that? Because you have to go. But at the end of the day, if you want to transform, well, this yeah, is you the don't. thing. Essentially, you, you don't have to go. So how we that's how we put it to clients because it, it, it is daunting going into a gym for anyone, even if you are confident and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so it's a, we base it off of the individual, don't they? If they aren't comfortable going to the gym, we make them understand straight away. Right, that's that's fine. You don't need to go to the gym. There's loads of things. Anyone here or anyone watching can do without going to the gym to improve their health and fitness, mm -hmm. like loads of things. So we'll start with that, start building up good habits, start getting outside more, start drinking more water, start, do you know what I mean? Just, just things that you can implement that anyone can do and then build from there. And then with the gym side of stuff, once again, with our coaching, they get full training programs tailored specifically to them. We have our own exercise database on the app. So they've got videos of us going through everything. There's loads of different aspects to it, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Troy, do, do, you, do you have clients or what would you say to people who have this misconception about strength training that, you know, oh, don't lift too heavy, you'll stay short? <laughs> I'm not just saying I, that. I, again, just, I think it's, it's one of those old... <laughs> that's what happened to Troy. 
<laughs> so. <laughs> See, if he, did, if, he, if he didn't lift in school, he would probably be uh, yeah, exactly. back yeah. Yeah. So this is why so, I waited. Yeah, next question. <laughs> yeah. And I'm still just about made 5'10". <laughs> about, you know, people saying, I don't want to get big or, you know, oh, I just want to do this because I don't want to do this way. I don't want to get big. I think strength training is a lot. There's a lot more to it than just building muscle. You know, as we spoke about a second ago, mental health, just general fitness as a whole, like, I think everyone can benefit from strength training in some way, shape or form. So we always recommend it. Obviously, bodybuilding and building muscle is an extreme factor mm. and a different thing on its own. So I think we automatically relate strength training, weight training to that side of things when, you know, a female training like that and a male training like that, they're going to get two different outcomes. Same again, me and Scott doing that. We're going to get two different outcomes because everyone's different. So, you know, I think the, the misconception is, as you said, a lot of people think, they start training from young it's going to stunt their growth it's not really a scientifically proven uh topic yeah a lot of people i think especially with a female clients or new female clients they there's a like the myth that if they start weight training they're going to get big and bulky and whatnot same with guys as well we'll have some guys you know i don't want to get too big and, and stuff <laughs> like that and uh what do you have to say to them just the guys the, let's forget the, the guys guy, to say it's just be truthful like it's not that you're not going to get massive overnight have like, you ever had to say that to someone yeah we so. say it all the time and it's it, because it would just be it's it's not really a thought through comment when people say it. it's just what they think like oh, i don't want to do any heavy weights because i don't want to get massive because not everyone's goal is to be muscly they're not bothered yeah. but um yeah it's like if that was the case we would all just be huge do you know yeah. what i mean it, it's not the case. that's, that's what seven I mean. days in the gym um so yeah it's just huge. explaining to them that number one that's how big you get is dictated by probably more the nutrition side of it or yep. a combination of the nutrition and training um for, for female clients you know strength training is what's going to get you the curve you know the curves and the toned stomach and the mm. glutes that you want you're not going to get big and muscly from doing weights like genetically that's just not going to happen to you so it's just it's just it's just giving them the right information and educating them on what actually happens with strength training and metabolically there's nothing better than strength training if you talk about longevity in terms of life in terms of life expectancy you're thinking about um you know as we get to older age menopause or menopause of age and whatnot there's nothing that combats all of these sort of aging effects than strength training and that's all proven so it's just, I think, breaking it down and, and educating people effectively on the benefits of it, which is way more than just building muscles. And have you had people, um, your clients, I keep saying people, you have clients um, trying to cheat on the diet? I think we've all and cheated on our diet, haven't we? I haven't. You asked you me. Definitely. You asked me just I did now. Never. No, so I know it, when we just went to get a smoothie and I said, oh, do you want us to grab you on it? And he said, no, I'm on my plan. Never in your life cheated on a diet? No. Not that I can remember. Yeah. Apart from the mocha flurry last night. <laughs> <laughs> no, no every, see that, I, but I did tell what he did on, on my check-in. So does that mean it wasn't a cheat? No, it does mean it's cheap, but at least he knows that yeah, of course, there's, of course. there's something. Because the question is, did you have anything off plan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's the that's the key, isn't it? With our, with our clients, we put that in there, and we can sort of gauge. You know, what I mean, we've done this long enough and worked with that wide variety of people. We can gauge if someone's not following the plan effectively, or if we you know we don't feel like they're they're sticking to it as much. But we all cheat on a, on a diet. You know, what I mean, essentially, we're all human. But like it says, you know, if it depends. If you want it six weeks, then you have to be strict. Yeah, of course. But seriously, in, in the same are, sense, let's be honest. One flurry isn't gonna make you overweight like that. Yeah. It's the habits and the the consistency, the the dedication and the control that you build from not having it because you probably had it, yeah, it was probably nice and then when was the last time I had it to be honest? Yeah. Do you know and what I mean? It all depends on the individual, it depends on the goal and it depends what we're trying to achieve and trying to work towards as you every day, you know, we I, I always put it this way to clients, you need to be able to do three things. You need to be able to number one, stick to a plan and not give into any temptation and build the willpower up to to stick to that no matter what. Mm -hmm. You need to to be able to maybe go 80 20 percent make good choices stick to a plan for the most part but have a bit of flexibility and enjoy yourself but not yep. go overboard and number three you have to be able to go overboard indulge go crazy do what you want but then rein it back in and get things back under control yeah. then once you can do all of those you can dictate where you go with your health and fitness goals and physique and whatnot and then it's uh, it's completely up to is you it, is it easier to just ha to be like a, a lifestyle change rather than okay 12 weeks and that's it after that i'm going back to my normal habits yeah 100 percent. 
So do you reckon, do you, do you push people more towards the lifestyle? We we're trying to, we're actually not trying to help clients build a lifestyle rather than yeah. saying you're doing a harsh, drastic, you know, if we're doing two hours cardio a day, low calories, it's not sustainable. Mm. So we're going to get you to a point, get you to re- your results, teach you then how to rebound correctly or, you know, get back up to maintenance and live life in control of what you're consuming and doing. See, a lot of, like, people now, the 95s, I don't have time. I do want to lose a bit of weight, but I don't have time. I'll come home. I'm tired. Um, I why, eat and why, then just... Why are know, they tired? I don't know. Because of their habits, because of the food that they're eating, because of the things that they're doing. They're not concentrating on sleep. Guarantee someone working a nine to five, he's probably up at, you know, six in the morning, he gets a workout done and he's got four meals planned for the day. He's probably coming home. He's having a good sleep. He's, he's functioning and performing a lot better than the guy who's waking up late, watching a bit of Netflix, a beer or two on the night, maybe a takeaway once or twice a week. I mean, it's your, your habits that can control the outcome of your, your progress, really. How do you install that into your clients? As, as Scott was saying a second ago, it's like when a client comes to us, it's right. If you're doing absolutely nothing, you're eating your takeaways, you're not tracking food, you're not drinking water, you're not sleeping right, you're not training. We don't need to dive straight into the gym on a low calorie diet and doing these things. It could be simply just reducing it, changing out a few of the things that you're doing for healthier options and getting you out for a walk, like something as basic as that. I think people automatically think, right, to get to a goal and to drop body fat, I've got to be in the gym seven times a week and doing cardio and eating chicken, rice and broccoli every day. Yeah, for for a lot of people, that's why they don't even start. Yeah, yeah. They don't yeah. even start yeah, exactly. because they think, well, I, I haven't got time to do all of that or I'm not going to be able to do all of that. When in reality, it, it, like I say, it, it, it's a, it goes by each individual client, but it's just assessing what time they have, what their capacity is for, you know, pushing themselves in terms of working out and whatnot, setting a baseline. So right, putting something in place that's going to be realistic. It's going to be achievable. It's going to get them enough progress because what happens is that progress just compounds then and then it becomes a snowball effect. So two, three weeks down the line, they're now looking for things. Actually, you know what? I'm going to try and get to the gym for Mm. another day. And then you build from there and find Mm. find people's, you know, find out what drives them, find out what their levels are, what they're capable of. And then, you know, you tap into that and build from there. What are good um, source of foods to have before and after your workout? <laughs> it's one of them. It's, it's, there's no... St- because everyone's different, yeah. but everyone seems, seems to think I need to have this. Yeah. And Essentially... Realistically, they might not need it. So. Yeah. It's uh, something that digests well. Like if you want to just uh, go to basics and just have a rough guideline pre-workout you want some carbs that are going to digest well you know so you can go into your workout not with a heavy stomach and and train effectively post-workout same again you want some simple carbs that are going to digest quickly a good amount of protein so you can start the recovery process and and that's it and you know i mean it doesn't have to be within a certain window it doesn't have to be you know a specific thing yeah Yeah. essentially if you're getting the you know you're getting you're following your sort of macronutrient targets for the day and they're spread out as evenly as possible. You're giving it about an hour and a half before you train, you know, then it doesn't really matter so much. So it's about finding out what digests well, works works for you and then hitting those macronutrients. It, there is a time and a place for pre-workout, post-workout meals and whatnot. Um, but that's probably more down the line when you're a bit more advanced with things, I'd say. And then uh, you can sort of specify things that a little bit more. I think it's going to come into like a bit of a fad, hasn't it, over the years? But... Yeah, it's not needed, but it helps people stick to their diet because they know, right, I've got my pre and post workout yeah. mm-hmm. and I've got three meals throughout the rest of the day. Whereas if you're having four meals, you're probably thinking, oh, I need to eat this because it's per-. And you automatically feel like you've got to when mm. it's what, what the, the, the secret to the diet is the one that you can stick to. Yeah. It's as simple as that. Whether you're fasting, whether you're low calories, whether you're, you know, you're eating high fats, high carbs, one that you can stick to and you can monitor and track. That's the key. That's the secret. Yeah. Oh, looking like you do. Definitely, yeah. Like, and and we've changed. We've done like, everything. I yeah. used to eat like competing wise. I'd be but five, then you six have to meals. to kind of see where you are. Yeah, of course. So like we now, now at this point now, I was explaining to a client down the line that now I can go from my days. I don't track my food every day, but I know roughly what I'm getting. Yeah, I it. eat three times a day, sometimes four. Completely different to how we used to. I don't track and that, but that's because I've done the last twenty years of of doing all of that. So. I've got a rough idea of what you know, I can yeah. work out what I've at by the end of the day and I can be you know keep it at that average and what So how was your experience on the last show that you did, the PCA? 
Um, yeah, really good. Won that show. British that finals. British finals. Yeah. So does that is that the whole of whole UK? Of Britain. Yeah. Brit- wow. Yeah. Whole of uh, so it's PCA. The so federation. you were the best looking guy. In well, that, best in that, physique guy. Yeah. In that and and the best looking class two. <laughs> <laughs> well, <I> yeah. <laughs> No, so you go, so with PCA, there's four class, four bodybuilding classes that go in high order. Okay. I was class two. So yeah, that was the British title. In your class. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was a... That's yeah. an achievement. Yeah, that was my second... The sec- whole of UK yeah. coming number one. That was my, my second British title. That was definitely the the pinnacle. Oh, was my, that your yeah. second one? Yeah, so I, I won a British title back in the UK BFF when, when they were actually a good federation. Um, it was in an intermediates class, but that was my first British. And then that one was in the open bodybuilding class to British so, title. You look awesome, you know. You put yeah. a picture up this morning, didn't you? That was from the qualifiers. Yeah. So it's funny, that that's where I got fourth. So I did the qualifier, oh, really? I got fourth, and that, that was the best I looked at that point. Um, I got fourth on the qualifier, very disappointed. And then we went back into the rest of prep for the next four weeks. Proper dug deep, pulled up. You, needed, like you needed the fourth place yeah, to yeah, be yeah. able to win the final. Hundred yeah. percent. So you, you got you yeah. got to suffer. Like you've I was devastated to... after it. I probably just didn't go to plan or whatsoever. Um, and that next four weeks, like literally killed, my, nearly killed myself. Like never, never fought with a guy who's got nothing to lose. <laughs> so uh, I pulled twelve pounds off in that four weeks. Bear in mind, I was already stage ready. Oh my! So I, bought, I pulled God, another twelve pounds. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how. So anyone out there who's moaning about their diet? Yeah, he was at eighteen stone on twelve hundred calories. Eleven hundred calories for four weeks. For four weeks. So people out there moaning about their fifteen hundred calories, two thousand yeah. calories. And whatever. And that was death. Like I remember trying to get my steps in and I was walking around the block around my house and I was literally dragging my feet. My missus used to come with me just to make sure we got back okay. But anyway, we got there and uh, we ended up winning the British in the end. So so. After all of that, what did it feel like when they said, your number, number one, your number? Yeah, that How was amazing. Did that feel? It was amazing, emotional, felt like crying. Like it was a lot, there's a lot that went into it, not just for me, but for yeah. everyone. For, like we was all that invested in He's it. These are crying before, yeah. but. Everyone, <laughs> like, like, my dad was close to in tears and whatnot as well. And like, my dad's like story, old school, like yep. and even he was emotional with it. So it was a lot, man. But I think everyone's seen how much work I'd put in and equally everyone had put just as much in. Like for me to be able to go to the depths of that prep as I did, meant Troy had to carry the load from, you know, a business side of thing, which is, not easy to do. Yeah. Roxy had to carry the load of our house, of our dogs. We we had loads of puppies at the time. So everyone did their part and everyone, you know, sort of had a part in it. So when it, when it was like, when I, that's why I always say we, if you know, it's I say we, we, yeah. we, because it was all of us. 100%. Yeah, so. I think that's why you have what you have. Yeah. yeah. Because when you talk about it, you say the word we yeah, rather yeah. than I. 100%. And that just is psychological everyone's together yeah 100 percent. and i've seen people use the word i i i but they, their story is very short yeah because you know coming from a music background myself as a band there's no we but uh, sorry there's no i but there's people that use the word i and yeah. then it's just, it's just like all right there's, you know there's six seven lads here you know yeah, doing yeah. the same thing and and I, th- I, I totally get it it's just it's just crazy and and i've done a uh just a normal standard prep uh, no yeah but you know it's, it's still the same it's a, it's a lot you know it, it, it's it's crazy but my next question is what are steroids and how do they work in the body because everybody seems just wants to be on them now and what the pros and cons same as anything in life as isn't it? honest as as you can get because this is vital not many people talk about it yeah so obviously, being bodybuilders, being on stage, there's, that's your playing field. Yeah. Right? That's your playing field. No one can say, yep, yeah, uh, Scott won that. He was natural. You can't say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's your playing field, though. Yeah, when it comes to when it comes to bodybuilding, to compete at that level, or any and nowadays, anyway, any decent level, not including natural federations and whatnot, um, you know, you're not going to do well in, unless you are assisted. It's as simple as that. You have the one or two genetic freaks that can get to a certain point without using anything and can do pretty well other than that it's just it's not going to happen you have to use pds if you want to take it that far so um it's just part of the sport it's not that the steroids have got worse it's that the sport has become very diluted so now everyone's a bodybuilder so now everyone takes gear when it you know when you start getting into 
why you should be doing and whatnot, people's reasons are all, all wrong. But um, like Troy said, there's there's pros and cons to it. Um, but Peter, Have you ever stopped someone from doing it? Like, you don't need to. Because we'd always advise like not to. If your goal is to be an IFBB pro and to be a bodybuilder, then you're going to have to realize that you're going to have to use that. But then the, the cons to come with that is, you know, there could be long term side effects, fertility, health, you possibly shaving years off your life. Not even part of the, you, yeah, you, if you use steroids, you're taking years off your life. Essentially, you, you run, you're playing roulette with how, your health and issues. But, made me look younger. Uh, <laughs> thing. It can, it can, you From can't, the outside. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah, yeah. But you can't, I can't say to you, if you take this, <laughs> this will happen and this won't happen. Yeah, yeah. It's literally part look. So it's just about people educating themselves on what the possibilities are because unfortunately, people, it, same with anything else, it's always why like, it's not going to happen to me. It's that sort of mindset. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I was doing so with Div. I was talking, I don't know if it was me and you, but it was like, I'll get messages and we get it quite often and it's like, all right, guys, I want to, you know, um, build some muscle. Well, should I take this? It's like the automatic thought process is, process is to take steroids straight, straight away. Like for us, it was like we built a solid foundation. We understand the fundamentals of deadlifting, squatting, eating high calories, high protein. No one is willing to do that now because their favorite influencer is probably taking steroids and already looks like that and to get like that there's no these people don't talk about right guys you've got to spend three years yeah, or five years of your life doing this because that's boring yeah. no one cares about there's that there's no entry point into it yeah. now that you can walk into a gym where you can and you can take whatever you want and that's it whereas before no it's not even just to say oh, back online now and shit yeah. but you can it's not even to try and be that that old guy saying oh, back in the day x y and z but there was entry points you would probably wouldn't be able to get your hands on things unless you was at a certain point in your training and you were around certain guys that are training at that point, mm. then you might get bought into that circle and whatnot. But by that point, you know how to eat, you know how to train, yeah. you know how to do all the other things that that matter. And, and then the steroids adds that next thing on top. So the problem now is that that's everyone's first port of call. I'm going on holiday, I want to take, what should I take? Like You can take everything in your world and you're not going to look this way. Do you know what I mean? It's understanding that, like just use common sense. If you were to, if, if it worked the way people think it worked, everyone would be ripped, everyone would be massive, but we're not. And like everyone, all of us that have been in a bodybuilding type gym, there's in more fact, people, people in there. people who are taking stuff without any guidance and proper knowledge, they look shit. Right, okay, welcome back <laughs> to uh, after the break. Um, we were talking about the facility and the issues, the pros and cons of steroids. Now, obviously, you wouldn't recommend. Yeah, so to, to, our sort to, of way of going, if you're a client coming to us and you're wanting to go down that route, if you're already doing it and whatnot, then we will advise as much as possible. But like I said, our thing is, unless you're trying to be a competitive bodybuilder at that top level, um, I don't see a scenario personally where it's worth it just with what could happen. It's the what ifs, do you know what I mean? So um, that's something we relate to all our clients. Obviously, if they are already using it and whatnot, um, then we'll help out as much as possible. Because like Troy was saying, there's definitely safer ways. There's safer models and precautions and, and you know, best ways to do things. But same as, you know, car, you can put your seatbelt on, you can drive the speed limit, but you can still get rid off at any point. Do you know what I mean? It's it's one of those things. So just your pot Yeah, thing, for us, I think in, in life and from our perspective, from our experience, unless you're, really trying to make a career of it and get to that pinnacle in terms of bodybuilding and and have the desire to be that which we did at one point then you know it's up to you whether you think the risks whether you're ready to take the risks or not yeah. outside of that with what could happen with it i don't see a scenario where it where it i can say yeah definitely do it because it's worth it just because of what could happen so it's all what ifs it's all ifs could be and um whatnot. you won't know until you yeah try. and that's the thing so there's definitely safer ways to do it and definitely precautions you can take and um you know a safer model but all these things can happen to anyone so as long as you know that and you're aware of all the pros and cons um then you know it's just a personal preference really and i always try to be completely um neutral with it because you get a lot of bodybuilders or ex-bodybuilders like us now that just go anti anti-drugs and anti this and oh you should never do and whatnot and i don't think that there's a place for it i wanted to be a bodybuilder i wanted to be the best bodybuilder i could be so that's what that's the route i took and i was aware of the consequences i was aware of the risks and it is what it is um but i think it's just about people understanding it and then trying to it comes down to how bad you want it yeah essentially 
if you really want it yeah. bad then. everything we do in life has a certain level of risk do you know what i mean so yeah, yeah, as long as you make sure you you educate yourself enough to understand what they are and what could happen it's down to you whether you choose to do that or not it's, it's completely up to you i ride mm. a motorbike do you know what i mean i know what comes with that but I'm willing to take that risk and I'll, I crack I'll, on and I'll ride it. I'll book my CBT, man. Oh, yeah, there you go. So it, it's, it's the same, same CBT as anything else. CBT and straight onto an R1. <laughs> That's literally my first bike, R1. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. And I've been, I've been all right. Sorry, God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like walking into the gym for the first time, right, <laughs> next week. Yeah. <laughs> I was all sorts, right, injecting all sorts of stuff. You, you know, you... Yeah. I blame Jordan. I was going to get a 600 and he, he pushed me towards getting the R1, but I'm glad I did now. So did you? Get the R1. Uh, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I need to. Basically, you've just advised someone to take steroids. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's based on what you just did. Yeah, yeah. the analogy. Yeah, I just messed up the whole analogy there. Really, <laughs> yeah. do what you want. <laughs> Boys, you know what? Everything comes. Everything good comes to an end. Um, thank you very much for today. I'm gonna definitely we'll call, we'll, we'll do another uh, episode on nutrition and more about the um, the fitness side of it. But for this episode of the wish running short of time thank you very much for your time and um any last advice for somebody who's thinking of getting into the gym but just just doesn't know where to start follow us yeah. <laughs> search online coaching follow us no matter like what that. yeah no, and it's not even like just plug like obviously it is a plug but i'm not even that's literally what we do we yeah. we are that that um that bridge between know having no structure no routine not knowing where to go with things and, and being on the right direction and, and you know making progress yeah. um yeah so you know and and just get started you know on the bigger scheme of things just get started it doesn't have to be a big intricate plan just get started and do something that's gonna help small and we all know big, we big all you. yeah we all know something that will help us feel better yeah whether that's mm -hmm. go for a walk do you know what I mean drink a glass of water like just start and go from there yeah wicked thank you very much boys Thanks for having me.